Hey, hey, welcome to a new Tuts Plus course. I'm Adi, and in this course, we're talking about Bootstrap, more specifically about version 5, which uh, shipped its first stable release on May 5th, 2021. Now, if you're a more seasoned developer, then at some point you probably worked with Bootstrap and you know what it's all about. Uh, but if you're not or you haven't, then uh, stick around because this course will show you how to work with this new version and also how to use Bootstrap in uh, general. You'll learn more information about the framework, what's new in version 5 compared to version 4, how to install it, how to use the grid system to create responsive layouts, and how to work with components. Because this is a short course, I won't go into too much detail, but just enough to give you the basics of working with this uh, very popular platform. Now, with Bootstrap, you can build any kind of responsive website or web application. But if you don't feel like doing it yourself, or maybe you simply don't know how, you can always get a theme for Bootstrap or a web template built uh, with Bootstrap by other people. And uh, a great place for that is Envato Elements. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to WordPress themes and plugins, web and email templates, Bootstrap templates, and more. There are millions of digital assets to choose from. They have simple commercial licensing and you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now using the link in the video description. All right, with that said, I think we should jump straight in. Let's start by learning a little bit more about Bootstrap. Uh, that's coming up in the next lesson, so I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're taking a closer look at Bootstrap and uh, see what it's all about. Let's begin. Bootstrap is the most popular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript library in the world. And with it, you can create any kind of responsive, mobile-first websites and web applications. Essentially, it's a framework that has a lot of components and utilities uh, written and tested by some very smart people. And that's one of the big benefits of using a framework like this. Everything just works as expected. All you have to do is use those components and utilities to uh, create your layout, add your content, and style it. The whole point of using a framework is to avoid repetition. So you don't have to style that button again. You don't have to code that accordion again. You don't have to write the CSS for that grid system again. You get the picture. With Bootstrap, it's simply a matter of grabbing the correct markup from the docs and you're good to go. All the CSS and JavaScript is written for you. And speaking of components, Bootstrap has a lot of them. Alerts, badges, buttons, modals, cards, icons, tables, and so on. If you want to see the full list, check out the link below to the official documentation. Now, of course, you can customize that code to suit your individual needs, but nine times out of ten, you don't have to. And uh, that's what makes Bootstrap so popular. How popular, you might ask? Well, at the time of this recording, which is June 2021, Bootstrap is currently being used in about 27% of all websites whose JavaScript library we know. You can check out this report by W3Techs for more information. That's a big number, and it just goes to show that developers are really happy with Bootstrap. Now, why should you consider using Bootstrap? Here are a few reasons. Number one, it will speed up the development process because there's significantly less code you need to write. Number two, using a framework like Bootstrap will save you the hassle of writing the same code over and over and keeps your code nice and consistent between projects. Number three, Bootstrap is responsive by default, so right off the bat, the grid and components will look great on any device. Number four, 
the Bootstrap code is compatible with all major browsers, so that eliminates the need to do browser testing. Finally, number five, Bootstrap has a huge community behind it, and that means that you'll find lots of themes for the framework, but also any problems you might encounter will be solved pretty fast because chances are someone already had the problem and found a solution. So with that little introduction out of the way, um, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this course. In the next lesson, we'll talk about what's new in version 5 of Bootstrap. I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at what's new in version 5 of Bootstrap. Let's go. The team behind Bootstrap has been working on this new release uh, for several months, actually. There were uh, three alpha and three beta releases before the stable one, and um, there are actually a lot of differences between v4 and v5. I won't go over every single change and uh, addition because it's going to take too much time, but instead focus on a few key ones. If you want to see the full list of changes, uh, check out this blog post. You'll find the link in the video description. All right, so let's quickly go over a few key changes. That's right, no more jQuery. This dependency has been removed in favor of vanilla JavaScript. You can still use jQuery, of course, but it's no longer required by Bootstrap. With that said, the framework is not entirely dependency free because it still uses the popper.js library for things like tooltips and such. Microsoft recently adopted the Chromium engine for its Edge browser, which means it will have all the modern JavaScript and CSS features. Because Internet Explorer is a browser of the past nowadays, Bootstrap has removed support for version 10 and 11, which, if you ask me, is a very good thing. Bootstrap 5 offers some custom-designed form controls that have the same look and feel in all browsers. These controls include the likes of input, checkbox, switch checkbox, radio button, select, file, and range. Finally, in Bootstrap, we have RTL support, meaning we can now easily develop websites that use languages written from right to left, like Arabic, Hebrew, and Persian. Bootstrap now uses CSS custom properties, or CSS variables in short. The reason it didn't before is that CSS variables are not supported by Internet Explorer, but since v5 drop support for ie that's no longer a problem and custom properties are being used in a few components and layout options the grid system got a refresh as well uh, we now have an xxl tier for a very large displays the gutter classes have been replaced with g classes and we have some new classes for a vertical spacing. And finally, in version 5, we have some new icons. Bootstrap now uses its own SVG icon library with more than 1300 icons, and it's really easy to use them, either as an embedded SVG, an SVG sprite, a standalone image, or even as an icon font. These icons are free to use in any project with or without Bootstrap. I've already added these to my icon library. So those are the main changes going from V4 to V5. Definitely some, uh, some great improvements there. Now, I think it's time we do some coding with the Bootstrap, but for that, we need to install it first. That's coming up in the next lesson, so I'll see you there.
Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're going to install Bootstrap the easy way. And we'll also explore some other options for doing that, including CDNs and package managers. Let's go. To get started, you would need to open up the official Bootstrap website, which is getbootstrap.com. Then you would click on download. And here you'll be presented with a variety of options for downloading the framework files. The first one, the, the one that we're going to use, involves downloading the compiled CSS and JavaScript files. But you also have the option of downloading the source files, which you can compile yourself using your own workflow. You can also get Bootstrap via CDN. And if you don't know, CDN is, uh, stands for Content Delivery Network. It's basically a service that hosts these files. And it's also a very easy way to install the framework. You just load up these two files and you're good to go. You also have the option to install Bootstrap via package managers, NPM, Yarn, uh, Ruby, and uh, a few others. So if you're into that kind of thing, if you have um, projects that um, require the use of uh, package managers, then this is also a great way. As I was saying, for this uh, course, we're going to download the compiled CSS and JavaScript. So let's go ahead and click that button. Now this downloaded a um, archive called Bootstrap 5.1.0 dist. Uh, from uh, inside the archive, we'll just copy the JS and CSS folders and we'll paste those in our own working directory. Here I just have a folder on my desktop called Bootstrap. Next, I'm going to open up this folder in my code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code here. And just to make sure everything works properly, let's go ahead and create a new HTML file. Let's call this Bootstrap. And let's load the necessary Bootstrap files. First is the CSS. So we'll add a link tag. And we'll go to CSS slash bootstrap dot min dot CSS. It's the file that can be found right here in the CSS folder. We also have to load the JavaScript for the framework. We'll do that right here before the end of the body tag. We'll say script JS slash bootstrap bundle dot min dot JS. Save that. And let's go ahead and open this in a browser. And let's actually open the documentation again. We'll go to Docs. And let's go to Components. Let's select the accordion, for example. The Bootstrap documentation is really good. It has code examples for every single one of its components. So you can simply uh, see a preview here, and you can copy the code directly and paste it in your project. It's super, super fast. So we're going to do the same just to make sure everything was loaded properly. So I just pasted that in. Now, if I just do a refresh here, you'll see that we have a nice accordion. It's fully functional. It's already styled for us. And that took, what, a couple of minutes? Well, that's the benefit of, uh, of using a framework. All right, so um, with Bootstrap installed, you can get to work right away. And whenever you're working with Bootstrap, there are two fundamental aspects you need to know, the grid system and components. Once you know those, it's going to be super easy for you to create any project you want with Bootstrap. So in the next lesson, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the Bootstrap grid system. I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're talking about the Bootstrap 5 grid system. Now, this is pretty complex. And because this is a shorter course, we only have time for uh, an introduction. But uh, I'm sure that everything I'm going to tell you right now is going to set you on the right direction. So uh, let's begin. All right. So to understand 
how to work with the grid system, there are three aspects of the framework that you need to know. Breakpoints, containers, and then columns and rows. So let's start with breakpoints, because as I was saying, Bootstrap is a responsive framework, right? But in order to be responsive, it needs certain breakpoints, uh, certain dimensions or screen widths at which it makes changes to the styling of the elements. So if you go to the uh, documentations, and by the way, when working with Bootstrap, the official docs are your best friend. You can find everything you want about the framework here. It's very well documented and um, it's going to be a huge huge help for you. So talking about breakpoints, uh, we can go to layout breakpoints. And I just um, want to show you the available breakpoints in the framework. So for uh, dimensions smaller than 576 pixels, there is no breakpoint. Well, actually, there is the extra small breakpoint, but there is no uh, class infix as they call it here. And then we have small for higher or equal than 576 pixels then medium for 768, large 992, extra large 1200, extra extra large, this is the one that was added in uh, version 5. This is for screens higher or bigger than 1400 pixels in width, so very very large screens. So just remember these uh, five uh, class infixes as they call them, SM, MD, LG, XL, and XXL. So those are the breakpoints and the corresponding dimensions. Let's quickly talk about containers. And for that, I'm actually going to write a little bit of code. Now, a container is a fundamental aspect of any bootstrap layout because that's going to, well, contain. It's going to add some padding around your content and it can also align your content within a certain viewport or device. And there are three types of containers you can use. The first one has the class of container. And I'm just gonna add some uh, some dummy lorem text in there. So you can see what's going on. This container sets a max width for the content at each responsive breakpoint. So if we go ahead and inspect the element, uh, you'll see that uh, this container, yeah, let's actually make this bigger. Uh, this container has a max width of 540 pixels right now, okay? But as soon as I make it bigger, or as soon as I make the viewport bigger, the max width, pay attention here, is going to change to 720 pixels. So depending on the width of your viewport, the container will change that max width and will uh, display your content centered like this very nicely with also some uh, margins added to the left and right. And those margins are also bigger or smaller depending on uh, the breakpoint. Notice in this situation, with the max width set to 720, the margins are 24 pixels. But if I go smaller, we have bigger margins now, 113.5, it says here, uh, while the max width is 540. And it goes like on the very small screens. This just goes to 100% with a fixed padding here of 12 pixels. So that's the first type of container. And that can be uh, used with the class of container. We also have the second type that's called fluid. So container dash fluid. Uh, this is basically 100% width at all breakpoints. We just have a nice uh, padding on that container of 12 pixels left and right. And then we have uh, kind of a hybrid type of container that's container dash breakpoint, which is 100% until that particular breakpoint. So for example, if I say container MD, that's container medium, right? 
So that's going to be 100% until it reaches that medium breakpoint. After that, it reverts back to a normal container that has a max width set to it. So those are the three types of containers. And these are the starting blocks for using the grid system because any row or any column should be placed inside a container. So now, let's do the following. Let's uh, get rid of this content. We'll use just a regular container for the rest of this demo. And now let's talk about the meat and potatoes of the grid system, and that is columns and rows. And we'll actually start with rows because these are wrappers for your columns. So you would start with a div, the class of row, and then inside you would place your columns. The bootstrap grid system works with 12 columns, which means you can make any combination of columns to reach that sum total of 12. And I'll show you that in just a little bit. But for now, to create the actual columns, you would create a div with a class of call. And inside, you would place your column content. Right? So now let's refresh. And there's our first column. Now, to make this a little bit easier for you to follow, let me add some uh, styles here for the container, and then the rows, and then the columns. Okay, so I just added a dashed border on the container. It's this blue color. And then on every single um, element that has a class matching coal, I added this very faint background color. And you can see the result here. So the dotted or the dashed is our container and the uh, the one with the color background is our column notice our column stretches full width by default watch what happens when we add another column so i'm just gonna duplicate this save see now we have two columns and each one takes up an equal amount of space in that row let's add a third column Again, the remaining or the available space splits evenly between these columns. Now, if I'm going to add another row here, and let's say with just two columns, our content is going to look like this. And I'll tell you what, to make these columns more visible, let me add a border right of one pixel solid white. Right, so you can see exactly where they end and where they start. Now, earlier I was telling you about making different combinations of column widths to reach that sum total of 12. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's consider the following example. For my columns, I can add a dash with a number from 1 to 12. So I can say, for example, column 12 for the first one, and that's going to span the entire width of my grid. That means it takes up 12 columns of my grid. I can say column 4 here, and that's going to take up 4 columns of my grid, and then the remaining space is equally divided between the other two. I can say call 4 on the second one as well, and call for here. It's going to be exactly the same result. But what if I say call 2, 2, and 2? So 2 plus 2 plus 2, that equals 6. Now, this first row will only take up half the amount of available space in my grid because 6 is half of 12. So out of the available 12 columns in my grid, I'm only using six. Each uh, column of my content taking up two columns of my grid, if that makes any sense. And of course, as you saw, you can mix and match. You can have the first column take up 
the rest of the available space and the other two only taking up two grid columns each. Now here's what's cool about the bootstrap grid. You can use certain special classes and just for clarity purposes, let me just get rid of this row. So you can use special classes that tie into the breakpoints. For example, I can say call MD2, call MD6, and call MD4. So what is that gonna do? Let's find out, let's refresh this. So we have two, six, and four. Two columns here, six columns here, and four columns here. But that's only available from medium screens and above. If I'm gonna shrink this, you'll see that on smaller screens, now the content is stacked. But I can go one step further. I can say, okay, on larger screens, I'm gonna say call large. Let's say I want this to be five. We'll do the same here, call LG five. So five plus five, that's 10, call LG two. Now things will start shifting a little bit because on large screens, we now have five plus five plus two. But as soon as I shrink this on medium screens, it's gonna be different. It's gonna go back to the styles that I set here, two, six, and four, two, six, and four. And just to make this a little bit clearer, let's go one, one, and 10. Okay, so that's one here, oops, one here, and 10 here. This is on medium screens and above. That is until we get to the large screens. Here, we have the other sizes, five, five, and two. So five, five, and two. And this goes large screens and above. There are, of course, two extra breakpoints after large, right? We have the XL and the XXL, and we can go even further if we wanna change how those columns should resize at larger uh, viewport sizes, we can do that. We can say call XXL, maybe I want this to be one column. Right, I can do that, no problem. This is a super easy way of creating responsive websites because you have control over every single breakpoint. Do you have a layout that uh, you know should behave differently when the screens are larger? Well, you can simply use these classes right here to fine tune things to exactly how you want them. Now, this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with the grid system. As I was saying, this is a shorter course, so I'm only giving you an introduction to the grid for the more advanced behavior like nesting and you know mixing and matching all of the different values you can use for the columns. The documentation, the official documentation for Bootstrap is your best friend. Or if you would like us to do a course on this uh, subject for the more advanced aspects of the Bootstrap grid or the framework in general, just let us know and uh, we'll definitely take a look. But until then, remember the three basic things you need to know in order to work with the Bootstrap grid, breakpoints, containers, and then columns and rows, or rows and columns if we're gonna put them in the uh, correct order. All right, so that's a quick introduction to the Bootstrap grid system. Uh, you would use this to create your layout, and then you would uh, add your actual content into that layout, into that uh, series of rows and columns. Uh, when it comes to the actual content, of course, you can write it from scratch. You can do that yourself. Uh, or you can use some pre-made components from Bootstrap. And that's usually the easier option, especially when you're dealing with more complex components like accordions and tabs that require JavaScript. You don't have to write those from scratch. Instead, you can just 
use the ones from Bootstrap. So in the next lesson, I'm going to quickly show you how to work with uh, uh, some of these components and also some of the utilities or helpers uh, from Bootstrap to, uh, to create your content. That's coming up next. Welcome back to the course. In this final lesson, we'll take a look at uh, components and utilities in Bootstrap 5 and uh, how to work with them. Let's go. Now, Bootstrap has a lot of components, as I was saying previously in this course, and you can find all of them if you open up the uh, documentation and you go to components. Here you can see the entire list of all the available ones uh, in the framework. Now, as I was saying previously, when it comes to content, you can write it yourself from scratch or you can use one of the pre-made components because chances are uh, whatever content you want to add to your website or web application, you might find a component in the Bootstrap library that already has everything you need. All you got to do is copy that code and slightly tweak it if necessary to match your own needs. So let's say that I want to add some buttons to my website, right? Buttons are like a quintessential component of every website. And Bootstrap has a couple of different options for buttons. And you can see a couple of examples here from the various styles like primary, secondary, danger, info, light, and so on, to using different tags for buttons like a regular link, a button, an input class button or type button, submit or reset. Uh, you can use outline buttons. And really, once you find the one that you need, let's say I want this one, you can simply copy, paste it in your page, and here it is. All ready to go. It's already styled. You don't really have to do anything. Maybe you want to add an accordion for a Q&A or something like that. Well, you can navigate to the accordion, see it in action here, copy the code, paste it in, and there it is. Then you can go back to that particular um, component and see all of its options. So for example, you have an alternate style here called flush, and you can simply modify this one. And that's going to create a slightly different appearance. Uh, you also have the option to keep certain items always open, and it tells you the instructions here. In this case, you have to uh, omit the data BS parent attribute on each accordion collapse. Uh, so that would mean that you would have to get rid of these bits. So delete those. And now you'll see that the accordion items will stay open even if other items are opened as well. So it's really easy to change the behavior of a certain component built with Bootstrap by simply uh, using the options that they provide right here. And the same story goes for all the other components. As you can see, there's a big list here. There's carousels, drop downs, modals, nav bars, all sorts of good things that um, uh, save you a lot of time because you don't have to code those things from scratch. Now, I also mentioned uh, some utilities or helpers and Bootstrap has a couple of those as well. You can find them under the helpers uh, category here. And uh, I'm just going to go through uh, a few of them uh, quickly. Let's go to colored links, for example. All right, let's say we have a link. And let's just get rid of this thing. Let's add a link here. And let's say test a link. So by default, this is colored like this, but uh, I can use certain link dash classes to colorize link, which is pretty cool. So let's say link success, it should be this green one. Simply add the class. And there it is. See how easy that is? What else do we have here? Ratios. 
So with this helper, we can actually manage the aspect ratio of uh, certain iframes and embeds and videos. Really helpful for when you're embedding a, a YouTube video, for example, and you want to keep it at a certain aspect ratio when you're resizing it. So as you can see, you wrap that in a div class ratio and then ratio dash and whatever that ratio is. Pretty cool. Uh, there are also helpers for position, like if you want an element fixed to the top or bottom, there are classes for that. Sticky, responsive, sticky. Very nice. There are a couple more here, uh, and I highly recommend you go through these and uh, learn all the helpers or utilities uh, that uh, come with Bootstrap. All right, folks, and that's about it for this course. Version 5 is a great installment of this, um, this very popular platform or framework. And um, I'm sure a lot of people will start using this new version uh, very, very shortly. Um, as I was saying, this is a shorter course, so I didn't demonstrate the full capabilities of uh, Bootstrap, but I highly recommend you download this and play with it yourself. And... Um, determine if it's a good fit for your workflow or not. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I'm Adi, and until next time, take care.